Hi, fire sign couples. So this reading is for uh, February. So there's like 15 more days left. And I'm not going to do all of you lumped into one category. We're going to do Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. And if I can figure out how to do it, I'll timestamp those in the description box below so you can skip everything that's not you. Um, so let's just get started. As I was going to hit play on this, I heard in my head that Ed Sheeran song, I see fire, you know? Um, and I don't know what that means because I'm trying to think about... Okay, maybe this is just like a, okay, it's fire signs, right? But I think it's more than that. Inside the mountain. I don't know. I'd have to listen to the song to get the message. So if you know the song, um, if it's about burning shit down, uh, maybe not such a good omen. But if it's about fire and passion, then hey, good news. I guess we'll find out. So if anybody knows what that song's about, all I know is it's from The Hobbit. Um, <laughs> maybe leave it in the description box for everybody else. Okay, let's get started. Leos. Holy shit, Leos. Um, so they want to just skip the format and talk about your challenges. Maybe that song was for you because, Leos, this is burning shit down. It's a challenge to burn shit down, tear it apart, light that forest on fire because you know what? When we burn down all this old crap, new little budding trees of growth that are beautiful and maybe even stronger, maybe they don't have like the disease that the old trees do, can grow. But it's a challenge because you are stubborn. You don't want to let like all this hard work. You worked really hard to build that tower. And so you don't want it to burn down. It's scary. It changes hard. But is necessary now okay because ultimately things aren't going to go in the direction you want until those changes are made so you can sit here and you can manifest the things that you want all day long in your relationship but they're not going to change and they're not going to go that way until you make those changes until you release some things so you might have to release fears that you have about your relationship you might have to release resentment or disappointment that you have with your partner you might have to even forgive yourself now this whole month of february has been a lot about our sacral chakra um in energy healings that I've done here in my house, a lot of the focus has been on that sacral chakra. And um, even in personal readings, when I'm looking at people's cards, a lot of times this month, it's been like, whoa, you have a sacral chakra block. Or um, I actually had one not so many days ago where uh, it was like a little scab on their chakra. Like I could see it as I was reading their cards. So anyway, um, we got to get that right. We got to get rid of our fear. We got to get rid of our disappointment We and we have in order to go where we want to go in our relationship because it actually is possible. That's telling you that here. It does take time though. Things take time to change. Um, just like it takes time to build trust back, right? Like perhaps your trust was broken in the relationship in one way or, in a, or another. Maybe you broke trust or maybe they did. And it's like, it takes time to forgive yourself for trusting them, right? For feeling foolish or whatever. But it also takes time um, to forgive them or what, or uh, forgiving yourself for the mistake that you made too. You know, it could be any of those things, but, but that has to happen. And so it's not just about forgiveness though. It's about fear. It's about living in that anxiety of the future of like, what if this, what if this, what if this? Worst case scenarios where really you just have to be more positive. You make the changes that you can control now and everything you else everything else you can't control, let it go. And then you'll be moving in a positive direction in the relationship like you want to. So now let's do our, oh, they're like, things will actually just like all of a sudden shift overnight, but it might not be in February. Does that make sense? Okay. So the energy you're putting out to your partner, you're a little bit, you're telling, like you're sending them mixed signals. Like you don't know what you want and that maybe you think that things are kind of hopeless. So that's unfortunate. That probably makes them feel a little concerned. So what are the challenges? And they're like, the challenge is really whatever this toxic shit is that you're carrying in that sacral chakra. So, okay, I they say sleep more <laughs> because you heal in your sleep. But, okay, so this is going to be something that sounds kind of weird. But um, most people that haven't seen the cords of attachment video, it's because you're in a relationship, right? So you maybe wouldn't want to cut your cords of attachment to your partner because you think that then it's going to end the relationship with your partner or it's going to sever it or whatever, right? Those are fears that we have and that makes sense. But here's the deal. 
if I were you, I would go and I would watch that video. I think there's a link to that in the description box below as well. Because you, can, if you are to be in a relationship with your partner, ethereal cords is like a cord of attachment between me and another person, or you and another person, or you and an entity, or you and a thought, whatever. Okay. Now these cords are always created. Now you can cut a cord without severing the relationship. It doesn't mean the relationship ends. It just means you're cutting all the bullshit out of the relationship. If I have a negative thought about my partner, over there, all of a sudden they might be going through their day, walking along, having a great day, and then, then they just feel like shit. It's because I just shot that energy through a cord of attachment to them, okay? Now, I can ask that the negative cords are cut and still, and still, um, hold on to the positive cords between us. Okay. So if I feel shitty because somebody called me a cunt or something at work, then <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen. It actually might've happened last month, but she said it under her breath. So I wasn't sure. So I didn't scratch her face off. <laughs> anyway, here's my point is, um, that would lower my vibration. I start to feel crank cranky my partner all of a sudden starts to feel cranky even though they're in a different place in the world right now, right? And they don't know why. And it's because that energy just shot through the cord. I just shot it out of my energy field to all the people I'm attached to. Okay, so I can go and I can cut the negative cords so that the only cords remaining between me and my partner and everybody else are positive. So that might be something to help you. Okay, so what are... Um, your steps through this aside from cord cutting and they're like just being okay with things coming to an end being okay with resentment coming to an end with grudges coming to an end even potentially the relationship coming to the end to an end some of you are in shit relationships but you don't want to let go of the happy memories of the past so you just like don't let go of the relationship even though it could be toxic or abusive now that's not every leo couple okay that's the problem in doing general readings but for those of you that are there that is a problem and you do need to cut the cord of attachment and just move the fuck on now for the rest of you what are your steps and they say just like let go of the small stuff you know, don't be so focused on like the little details of things like jumping on um, every word that they say, you know, going on the attack for like different, uh, like reading too far into things. Okay. Try to read the messages as a whole and not necessarily reading like emails, text message, maybe, but um, the things that they say, picking them apart too hard because you're pissed because something happened and you're upset at yourself, you're upset at your sister or your colleague and you're taking it out on them. You're lashing out. You know, it's like, oh, maybe your partner says, oh, you look pretty today. And you're like, what? I didn't yesterday. Fuck you. <laughs> that kind of a thing. It's like, instead, just look at the picture like, oh, they call me pretty. Okay. Is it, you just like a little bit spastic. Okay. So what should you be focusing on in your relationship? The long term. Okay. If it, if it's not going to matter a week from now, a month from now, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So you can have your relationship last. Okay. Cause they're going to be real irritated with you. If you're going to be jumping on every little thing. Now looking at Aries, 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 go berries. What energy are you putting out? That you're honest, but you're indecisive and you don't know how to handle your own shit. Which is interesting because usually we look at Aries as like so in control. But your partner is kind of like, what the fuck? Um, what are the challenges in your relationship this month? And they're saying not to be fearful or worried about it. Um, not to be hurtful either. Because you're going to be very direct in your communication and you do... Um, I have like a lot of you do have a soulmate connection to somebody. Okay. A lot of you watching this video, you are with your soulmates, but the way that you communicate with them is going to be a challenge. Like it might be very direct. It might be a lot. It might be very verbal and not so emotional the way that they're picking up on it. Okay. Like you might have a lot of things to say and they might just be like, that's just words. Like they need more actions. They need more shows of love. Okay. Because they're not going to feel it that way they're just gonna be like oh you're just talking again so there's that um what are the steps through the challenge and they say just be really active because your partner likely doesn't feel like what you're saying matches what you're doing you have to show them okay you have to show them that they're appreciative 
or appreciated, that you're appreciative of them. Um, this would be like a very good, I mean, it's probably obvious because it's February, but this would be a very good month. Like even if you take your partner on dates a lot, this would be a good month to shower them with gifts. Okay. Like, even though maybe you're spending a shit ton of money on them, like they don't care about that. Um, they don't care about going places and doing things. They need something tangible, okay? They need you to show them something, not just say something. Like, hey, when this happens, then this. They don't need promises. They need actions. Now. Now. Okay? Now, um, what should your focus be in your relationship in order to make it better? And they're saying, don't be defensive. You really got to figure out how to be more emotionally um, connected to them. Try to be more em empathetic. Understand where they're coming from, okay? You really got to go out of your way to try to understand their feelings. Okay, now, Sagittarius, what is the energy that you're putting in to the relationship that your partner is picking up on or what's their interpretation of your energy in February? And it's like um, that... Maybe the relationship isn't your entire focus. Like, it's important to you, but you're kind of, like, interested in other things, and that scares them because they think that it means the relationship isn't moving forward. Like, oh, they're more focused. Like, they care about me, but they're more focused on, like, their hobbies. They're more focused on, um, you know, playing softball or um, taking pilot's lessons or I don't know what. <laughs> but, but they're concerned. Um so they're saying, ultimately, that's not what they want. They want to be your focus, okay? So the challenges for you are going to be to um, identify, okay, A, is that what they want because they are um, not capable of being in, like, a healthy relationship where it's, like, two individuals? Do they need us to be the same person? Is this a toxic, codependent relationship? Because <laughs> if so... Um, you're not necessarily doing the wrong thing, but you might experience some drama because they don't know how to not be one person as opposed to two separate <laughs> individuals in a relationship. Um, for the rest of you, though, they're saying it's just um, the challenge is going to be as you're aware of what they need to really be confident that you do have to come first in your relationship in order to be a good partner to the other person and how to explain that to them, okay? So the steps through this is just to imagine the relationship successful, understand that the relationship is strong so long as you're communicating with thought, okay? As long as you're thinking before you speak, your relationship is going to be strong, it's going to be happy, um, infinite possibilities here for you in regards to where this relationship is headed. It could go any direction that you so choose, so long as um, you're thinking before you speak. Now, what are areas you should focus on in your relationship in order to bring more love into it in February? And they're saying there's not so much that you have to do, it's just more like be really confident in yourself, in expressing what it is that you need, in expressing what it is that you want want and um, in your communication with them. You don't need to overextend yourself as far as what you're giving to the relationship. This month is about you. It's about focusing on what you need so that you can be the best person available um, to your partner in that relationship. So good for Sagittarius. So that is your couple's reading for February and see you soon.